Okay, welcome everybody to video number 69, <laughs> Continental Drift Part 1. As, as Mrs. Burke likes to call him, an old dead dude. <laughs> yes, okay? part of that flow. <laughs> <laughs> but here he was, one of these early scientists who really gave us a lot of information. Okay, something cool to know about him, he did freeze to death, but let's not worry about that right now. And they now. didn't find his body until like three years later. Yeah, yeah yes. that's kind of gross. <laughs> So he came up with this idea of Pangea, and I've heard you guys talk about Pangea before. Yeah. Maybe that, sixth grade, do you think? I think they surprised that all the continents were once joined together as one large landmass. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and what he said, though, is that they didn't stay together. Different location now today. So we call this movement of those plates a continental drift, and he really told us the beginning stages of that. Uh, he wrote a book in 1915 all about it. Hey, maybe a new bear selection? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Scientists who sang, ha ha, Albert Wegener. They reminded him he had no proof for how or why the continents could do this. And until you show just how or why you merely have one interesting part of the year of 1930, on an expedition to Greenland, Wegener got caught in a blizzard. All right, so we hope you guys enjoyed the Wegner song, and we're headed into Pangea. So if you guys take a look at the picture that you have right here, so this is exactly what Mrs. Thomas had told you guys. This is when all the continents were joined together, all one landmass. Think about that. You could have just traveled from one end to the other. And it's like a, <laughs> a world trip. All it in would, one. right in the car. You could do the whole That's world it. trip all over it. So this is back about 200, 250 million years ago. So this is not something that was recent. Huge masses of hot mantle from deep within the earth surge upwards, melting and smashing the crust above. The eruptions continued for over a million years. They spewed out over a million cubic miles of molten rock. It was the most cataclysmic event the planet has ever witnessed. Afterwards, a great supercontinent emerged. Pangea. Right, so the movie you just watched actually showed you how Pangea was created. This animation you're watching now actually shows how Pangea broke apart. Remember, the force that is doing all of this is the convection currents and the mantle. And if you haven't written that down, I would make sure that you do that. So here it's just showing all the continents being broken apart, moving along. And we're almost to modern day. And here we are. So the lines that you actually see here are the plates. Plates can include both land and ocean. Um, and this is, of course, our modern day continents. So continental drift is really that process of these plates shifting. Again, remember, it's coming from those um, convection currents in the mantle. And we're talking very slowly and over a long period of time where these plates moved across Earth's surface. And if you really look at it, it will explain why those continents fit together. So we want you guys to take a look at these maps as you've seen them. We like them because they have the dates underneath them. So you've got uh, Pangea with 250 million years going to the Triassic, which we're going to work with Gondawandaland, right? Mm -hmm. And Laurasia, yep. Yeah. And then down to the Jurassic, which everybody knows from the dinos, right? Dinosaurs. Yep, yeah. Cretaceous. Can you think of anything ex exciting that happened then? Well, I wasn't there. So yeah, me neither! <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, present day here at the end. Okay, summary time. So who was Alfred Wegener? How does he relate to plate tectonics? Be sure you're able to explain the theory of continental drift. And did you draw yourself a diagram of Pangea? 
If not, put me on pause and go and do that. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.